11.5 has brought with it some insane new underrated champs and builds, so you already know our analysts have been hard at work picking out each of them. We've been able to gather 10 new sleeper OP champs and builds that we're super excited to be sharing with you all today. Each champion or build mentioned in this video is still heavily flying under the radar, but are extremely strong, so you can abuse them to get ahead of everyone else. As always, if there are any up and coming builds or champs you think we missed out on, let us know in the comments below and we may feature your finding in a future video. For more videos just like this one every single patch, to stay completely up to date with the meta, don't forget to smash that subscribe button and turn on notifications. Alright, let's jump into it. Let's start off by looking at a new OP Hecarim build we weren't able to fit into our latest Korean builds video. It's the exact setup being spanned by other broken junglers like Udyr and Skarner, which consists of a Chemtank Rush into Deadman 2nd and Force of Nature 3rd. The build has started picking up a bit of steam as the patch progresses, but it's still only used in 30% of games, so we wanted to be sure none of you are missing out. The move speed is just absolutely unfair from this build, and provides the enemy with little to no counterplay once you complete it. With Ghost popped, Chemtank activated, Dead Man's move speed, Force of Nature move speed, and Phase Rush proc, it's just plain silly as to how busted this setup is making Hecarim. Since Hecarim gains bonus AD based on his move speed, you still deal a considerable amount of damage even though you're building full tank. With how fast you zip around in fights, it's so easy to dodge skill shots while dipping in and out as you please. For boots, you want to run Lucidities as the 12 summoner spell haste and flat 20 haste the boots provide are amazing for Heck. Either Hecarim or this build will likely be nerfed in the coming patches, so if you want to abuse him, jump all over it while you can. The rune page is of course Phase Rush, and for secondary, take Domination, running Sudden Impact and Ravenous Hunter. The first sleeper OP champion we need to feature is Corky Mid. He's been a very quiet, consistent performer over these past few patches. With a win rate around 51.5%, Corky's just waiting patiently for his time to break out and really shine. So what changes have led up to Corky seeing more success? After all, at one point last season, we had him way down in C tier as one of the worst mids in the game. The meta build right now is Rushing Shield Bow into Man Immune Second and then Essence Reaver Third. And what do these items in this core path have in common? They were all buffed in previous patches. Once people swapped over from the Dead Trinity Force build to this one, Corky has been reaping great benefits. Survivability, burst, infinite mana, you're getting a little bit of everything Corky wants from this setup, which makes it so strong for him. For runes, take Fleet Footwork coupled with Inspiration Secondary, opting for free boots and biscuits. Lethal Tempo is also really underrated, so if you're in a matchup where you feel the sustain isn't necessary, try out Tempo for some added burst. A really interesting Scion build that has been seeing a ton of success in solo queue is one we did not see coming. A Bruiser Scion setup consisting of Stridebreaker into Titanic Hydra and then Sanguine Blade third is the build. Breaking all this down, Stridebreaker has really great synergy with Scion's kit as keeping the enemy slowed to charge Q longer will really add to his damage. Using Stridebreaker Dash to get in range of E or Q can help Scion out tremendously as well. You can also activate Stridebreaker while in passive, so it makes cleaning up kills really easy if you end up going down. The AD ratio on Scion's Q is actually quite large, as the minimum ratio scales from 45 to 75%, whereas the max damage ratio goes from 135 all the way to 225%. Since both Titanic and Stridebreaker provide the most health for any items in the game, the shield strength from Scion's W will be massive. This is because Scion's W scales with max HP. As for Sanguine Blade 3rd, it can definitely be swapped out for something like Sterics, but if you want insane 1v1 power, then look no further. After using your full combo, you'll begin whacking away at the enemy with all the attack speed from Sanguine and deal a ton of damage thanks to the max health on hit damage from Titanic. Sanguine just makes side laning with Scion really insane, but if you plan on team fighting more Sterix is great too. Roll with Grasp as your keystone and take Inspiration Secondary with Biscuits and Approach Velocity. The most underrated support pick for the meta we're in is Poppy. In fact, Poppy's a great champ for three different roles at the moment, but really flies under the radar. If you're in need of a reliable counter to Pike, Leona, Rel, or Thresh, then a good Poppy can completely shut them down. For example, if Thresh ever tries to engage after hitting a hook on your ADC, all you gotta do is activate W, sit beside them, and there's no way Thresh will ever be able to fly in. If Thresh takes the hook, you just block him midair and look to turn the fight. At level 6, the Disengage from Poppy ult completely counters those hard engaged champions and really helps to keep your teammates safe. Let's not forget the all-in potential of Poppy is actually really insane too. It's not just the safety she brings to her team that makes her so strong. If you can pin the enemy up against the wall, your full combo can chunk them for a really good amount. Locket or Chemtank can work really well for rush items followed up with Deadman 2nd and Thornmail 3rd. 
Take Aftershock as your keystone with Domination Secondary, running Cheap Shot and Relentless Hunter. A build that's been poking around for a little while now and that Faker has been spamming in 11.5 is Man Immune Talon. With the passive damage from Man Immune being increased for abilities, it makes the item way stronger on spell reliant champs. The mana is also really nice for Talon as he can stay on the map longer, constantly shove waves, and be more impactful with his heavy roam style. Man Immune provides some nice scaling insurance too as Talon already has one of the best early games for any mid. Since the buffs, a core build consisting of Prowler's Claw into Man Immune Second and Serpent's Fang or Edge of Night Third is actually Talon's top performing setup. The majority of players, however, are really missing out, as lots are skipping Man Immune completely. Keep in mind, Talon was also just directly buffed in 11.4, so coupled with these Man Immune buffs, he's become so much stronger. What you want to do is start the game off with Longsword Refillable, and then on your first base, pick up the tier. From there, rush your Prowler's Claw, upgrade tier to Man Immune, and complete Edge of Night or Serpent's third. In games where the enemy team has lots of shield, grab Serpent's, but if that's not the case, prioritize Edge of Night. Take Electrocute for the Keystone with Sorcery Secondary, rolling with Nimbus Cloak and Absolute Focus. Draven has a new build bouncing around that one of the best ADCs in the world, Viper, has been playing. We've seen so many different champions recently deviate away from rushing Mythics, or even building them at all, and Draven is another one following suit. Essence Reaver into Sanguine Blade is the core setup. Sanguine was meta on Draven at one point last season and is really underrated for Season 11. You'll be chopping your opponents to pieces with this one, as the 1v1 power it provides is so broken. The Spellblade proc from ER, combined with the bonus lethality and attack speed from Sanguine, make dueling so effortless. Duskblade can be thrown in there as your third item to further amplify the burst potency. Run Hail of Blades is your keystone, and the quick burst of damage you have is just ridiculous. Take Precision Secondary with Presence of Mind and Bloodline. A hidden gem up in the top lane that's being played over in Korea is Sejuani. The setup consists of running Ignite with Teleport to give you lots of early kill threat. Sedge Top actually wins a ton against meta picks like Aurelia, Renekton, Fiora, and Malphite. Sejuani was just buffed in 11.4, which saw her W2 damage receive a solid boost. This adds some nice poke power in those melee matchups, as Sejuani W is only on a 9 second cooldown at level 1, and scales all the way down to 5 seconds when maxed out. Sedge's damage is actually surprisingly strong, and this will allow you to secure tons of early kills. Your lane opponents will never have played against the Sedge in their life, so once you learn the pick and understand her limits, you'll have such a massive advantage. The core build for Sedge Top will be a Frostfire Gauntlet Rush into Thornmail 2nd and Warmog's 3rd. You don't see Warmog's on too many champions, but it's great for Sedge, even more so after the W buff since the damage scales with max HP. Take your Q level 1, W level 2, and E level 3. Proceed to max W out first, Q second, and then E last. Grasp will be your keystone combined with Inspiration Secondary, running Biscuits and Time Warp Tonic. Start the game off with a Corrupting Potion to give yourself amazing sustain. One of the most criminally underrated mid laners in the entire game at the moment is Zillion. Everfrost buffs from last patch have turned Zill mid into a sleeping beast. More specifically, it's Everfrost into Cosmic Drive, as both items were just buffed. The build is just so broken because it provides massive amounts of ability haste and also gives Zillion some added disruption to line up his double bombs easier. The level 11 cooldown on Zillion ult is 90 seconds without any haste. By building Lucidity Boots, Everfrost, Cosmic Drive, taking Transcendence along with Haste Rune Shard, you'll top off at 98 ability haste for your mid-game spike. This is just completely ludicrous, as 98 haste is the equivalent of 49% CDR, which in turn drops Zillion ult to a 45 second cooldown. That's not all though, because we still haven't factored in Zillion W. Zill W reduces all his cooldowns by 10 seconds, so this would drop the ultimate CD to 35 seconds. Keep in mind, Zillion W is only on a 6 second cooldown when maxed out, so he'll be able to further reduce his ult cooldown and ensure it's up every 20 to 30 seconds max. In extended team fights, there are situations to where you'll be able to get two ults off, which is just so broken. Ultimate aside, the constant bombs you'll be able to chuck out for poke and zone will also give you insane presence. All in all, haste stacking Zillion is actually broken, and players have yet to realize it. The complete build is Everfrost into Cosmic Drive, and then Archangel's third combined with Ionian Boots. Take Airy for the Keystone with Inspiration Secondary, opting for Free Boots and Biscuits. Another champion we found to be performing much better after the Man Immune buffs is Pantheon. 
Man Immune's second item is really great for Panth, as it will pack a massive punch once you get tier fully stacked and Mirror Mana activated. Like we mentioned for Talon, since Mirror Mana's shock damage based on mana has been increased from 1.5 to 3.5%, you're receiving more than a double damage increase in that passive. The fact Panth is a spell reliant fighter and can spam out Q very frequently means a Man Immune works perfect. Since Pantheon really wants to be as active around the map in the early to mid game, the infinite mana from Man Immune synergizes nicely in that regard. The complete build is an Eclipse Rush into Man Immune's second and then Steric's third. You still want to start the game off with a Corrupting Potion and grab the tier on your first base. Conqueror is Pantheon's best keystone, paired up with Biscuits and Time Warp Tonic from the Inspiration Tree. And lastly, to round everything out, let's have a look at one more underrated champion being Maokai Top. Top Mao has been slept on a ton for 11.5, as his power with Chem Tank is really undervalued. The item is just so nuts right now that any champion who can abuse it should be taking full advantage before it's nerfed. We already touched on the emergence of Chem Tank Hecarim at the start of the video, and Maokai's another who should be seeing way more play because of it. Pop Chem Tank, run up to the enemy, press W, and there's very little they can do to counter that kind of engage. Chem Tank gives Maokai way more reliable pick power and allows him to catch out targets really easily if they misstep. Full build is a Chem Tank Rush into Thornmail 2nd and then Spirit Visage 3rd. Grasp can work in melee matchups, whereas Aftershock provides much more value against ranged champs. Inspiration Secondary with Time Warp and Biscuits is very standard. Alright, now that you're all up to date with the best new trends that are flying under the radar, look to abuse them in solo queue before everyone else. If you enjoy learning about these off-meta champs and builds, then don't forget to drop a sub and turn on notifications, as we'll be sure to provide you with lots more in the coming patches. Until next time, good luck in solo queue, and have a great day.